Well, welcome everyone to the Full Life Podcast by Grace Church, where we hope to inspire, challenge, and clarify your next steps in faith. I'm David Lawson, and today we're talking about a really big topic, a topic that is uh, that we face every day in our lives, and that is with technology. And how do we have a healthy relationship with technology? If you're a parent, you're going to love this because you're going to be learning some tips and tricks along the way about how to parent and navigate through this topic uh, with your children. If you haven't had a chance to like, share, and subscribe this podcast, I encourage you to do that because that will allow others to benefit from what you are learning and also keep you updated when uh, new podcasts are available. Well, today's podcast grew out of a sermon series at Grace called Digital Hygiene. And uh, we're talking about technology, and we're talking about how to have a healthy relationship with technology. And so uh, to help me with this topic, I've invited Sean Snyder, our Grace Youth Director, to join me. I'm hoping he's keeping up with all this, although I'm not sure, Sean, anybody can really keep up with all this. I, I do what I can, but you do what it, you is, can. it is a quick, quick topic. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, it's, and we're adding to it every day. Uh, but not everybody who is listening is familiar with you, so why don't you spend some time uh, just introducing yourself, a little bit about what you do, and a little bit about your family. Yeah. Uh, so like you said, my name's Sean. Um, I have been here at Grace since 2016. Mm. My wife and I graduated college and then pretty much immediately got plugged in here. She was an intern with us. And um, from there, uh, I became a volunteer. That volunteer role turned into an internship. That internship turned into a full-time role, and I've been here ever since. Um, so we've been married for about five and a half years now. So um, one of the exciting things was a couple weeks after our fifth anniversary, we welcomed our uh, firstborn, his name's Sam, into the world, and uh, he is a ball of joy. Uh, <laughs> and emphasis on the ball. That yeah. kid is chubbing up, and is. it's it's hilarious to watch, but he's, yeah. he's growing like a weed, and um, it's just it's really exciting to see what God's doing um, in our family and uh, and just in His life too. Yeah, well, congratulations to you again. Um, every time I see him, he's just so chill. I mean, every time he just I don't know he, he kind of gets along with everybody. He's a happy baby. Yeah. I don't know how we got so blessed, but <laughs> he is a happy baby. He only cries when he needs something. So for first time parents, we were definitely uh, thankful that the the Lord sent us. Well, him. be sure and have another one because yeah. you get to experience the other <laughs> side of it. Then, well, well, Sean, this is a this is a huge topic for us. Gargantuan, really. Uh, we kind of have this love hate relationship when it comes to technology. Today's focus is digital media. Um, we would like to think that we can't live without it, but there are times when we wish we could because uh, we see sometimes, if, if, we're, if we're aware, and, and uh, as we have talked about before, a lot of times we're not even aware of the influence that it's having on our lives. It's just something we participate in, we gauge in, we drop into it, and that's where we are. That's the world we're living in. But it's just a really big topic. It's a huge topic for parents. They're trying to figure out how to navigate through this too. And so there's this personal assessment we have to make. And then as a parent, there's this assessment we have to make. How do I keep up with all this? Or do you have any tips or trips to, to help me with this? And so it's just a really, really big topic. But when we talk about um, this idea of digital media, you see the tension with it all the time. Uh, you see the effects of it in the kids, even though they might not really understand what the what's influencing them. Uh, you see it in the faces of parents who are saying, help me here. I don't know what to do. So talk to us a little bit in general about some of the tension that you are feeling and seeing with students and with parents. I, th I think some of the, the biggest pieces of tension that I notice is that digital media has a way of shaping our worldview in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, we don't even necessarily notice some of the trends or the themes that we're, we're taking part in. Um, and noticeably they're they're given to us also so we don't we don't even necessarily have an active role in them um, outside of you know clicking the remote or putting on a different song um, so that is one part but I think another aspect of it is uh, especially on the parent side there's just so much content out there that it's so difficult to get your arms around it all and know what is good what's bad what should I stay away from what should I promote my kids to watch um, at what age should I allow them to watch these different things? So like you said, it is such a huge topic and it's growing more and more each day. You figure um, the TV shows that you grew up with mm -hmm. are still available. The TV mm -hmm. shows I grew up with are still available. And then now they're adding more and more each month, each week. So the the library just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the selection because of that keeps growing along with it. Well, and they're not just available. They're available on demand. Whenever you want exactly. them, they're right there, um, and which complicates the issue uh, for us. So there's a benefit to it, but then there's also this complicating factor to it as well. Uh, 
I like what you talked about there because uh, oftentimes when we think about digital media, the first thing that comes to our mind is social media. But really, this whole idea of digital media is much bigger than that, isn't it? It is, because when we talk about digital media, we're talking about anything that's been digitized. And that's <laughs> everything at yeah, this point. At this point yeah. um, you're talking about Netflix. You're talking about Hulu. You're talking about YouTube. Um, I listen to all of my music. I don't have CDs or, uh, you know, I grew up in the 90s, so cassettes at one point. Like, th there's none of that anymore. My, my wife and I have a record collection, but that's more because we like to go back to – Feeling yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but the truth is, is that most of my listening is done through Spotify or through a streaming service in that way. So that when you consider all of those things and remember that that's digital media and then also factor in things like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all these different social media aspects, you've got user generated content and then you've got professionally generated content. But all of it comes together to create this idea of digital media. And uh, a lot of times, some of the tips you're giving to it, you're going to be giving to us later today, uh, apply to uh, those other aspects of media. But because the the social media world is so big uh, and it's so influential, we're probably going to be focusing a lot of our attention on that. And when you and I talked about this earlier, we ended up dropping into two different categories. Uh, it probably won't be any surprise to anybody who's listening, but two different categories when it comes to this idea of digital media and its influence in our lives. There's the risk and the reward. Now, uh, we tend to think when we think about social media and we're having a conversation like this, our minds quickly go, they default almost to the risk side of things. We start saying everything that's wrong with it. But there really are some rewards to it. There are some benefits to it that we have to acknowledge. And really, as I began thinking about this, it's the rewards that keep us going back to it. That's why we do it. That's why we're involved with social media is the reward side. And so since we tend to think about the risk side default, let, let's start with the rewards. Let's start with the positive. What are some benefits that you see or some rewards that are associated with social media or digital media? Yeah, I, I notice this a lot with our students because I think that they gravitate more towards the rewards initially and then find themselves in the pitfall of the mm -hmm. risk. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that we're starting here because some of the aspects that I think of when I think of the the positive side, the rewards of social media and digital media is things like encouragement. Um, I can't tell you how often you see somebody that's celebrating something on social media. Mm. Um, somebody is welcoming a new child. Like I, I had over a hundred comments saying, uh, welcome to the earth, mm -hmm. Sam. Um, yeah. And that was, that warmed my heart. So there's a, there's an encouraging piece where when we get to see these milestone events in people's lives, we get to be a part of that. Um, and speaking of that, Social media provides a window into the lives of other people. Mm -hmm. um, when we know what's going on, it helps us to know how we can interact with them. It helps us to keep in touch with them. I've got cousins and family that live in California that I haven't seen for probably going on 20 years at this mm -hmm. point, but I still know what's going on in their life. I know that one of them just welcomed a baby. I know one of them's getting married. Like there's all of these different aspects as well. Um, but I, I think it provides a chance for us to see into their life without them having to necessarily keep up with everybody individually. And because of that, there's connection that forms. Mm. And it's a level of natural connection. It might not be the same thing as going to the mailbox and seeing your neighbor and asking right. them how they're doing. Right. But at the same time, we're able to connect with more people on a wider level, maybe not a deeper level, but a wider level to know what's going on in their life. And that creates the sense of like, there's more people that are important to us now than maybe 50 years ago mm -hmm. there were. We had our, our initial family. We had our extended family. But outside of that, it was pretty much that bubble. And now we've got friends from college that we can still keep up with, and they have a meaningful part of our life. We've got friends from um, when we lived in the other city 10, 15 years ago that are still a part of our lives in that way. So I think that because of that, that's the reward aspect of digital media mm -hmm. is that it keeps us connected. It gives us something to um, to talk about, to encourage other people, and that provides windows into things like praying for them, um, if we're being uh, really on on top of things, uh, evangelizing to them. Mm -hmm. uh, if we know that somebody's going through a hard time, it makes it super easy now to send a, a even a digital invite to church mm -hmm. because everything is changing in that way. So with all of that in mind, I think that that's some of the big pieces is that there's connection that can happen. And like I said, to start off this this 
conversation. I think that our students understand that in spades because um, it used to be that the third space, which is this idea of like you go to home, you go to school, yeah. um, what is the other places that you go to hang out? It used to be like the mall or the roller rink for students, but now it's it's online. Mm-hmm. They can connect instantly with their friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's a good thing used in the right context. Yeah. Yeah, this idea of instant, you have instant access. You know, it used to be when uh, when Julie and I were, were dating and she was uh, at a different school from when I, we wrote a letter every day to one another. And of course, you had to write it, you had the stamp, you had to put it in the, in the, in the mailbox, you had to go to her and she had to uh, read it and then she would respond to me. And so, you know, there was this, uh, it wasn't instant access. It was, if we had social media, we could have texted back forth to one another or we could have... Uh, um, posted something on Facebook or some other social media um, app, and we could have been had this instant access to what's going on in one another's lives. Yeah, I remember um, when Jess and I were still dating in, in college uh, for Christmas break one year, we would watch the same TV show. We would like yeah. press the same button at the same time, <laughs> and uh, we would be on the phone with each other watching the same television show, even though she was in North Carolina and I was up here in Ohio. Yeah. So it, it creates a level of connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that now is, they have watch parties. Yeah. Right? You, can, you, you can watch with one another. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was, that was a fun little way to connect, but very different from waiting multiple days to receive a letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we talked about encouragement, talked about connection, talked about uh, even encouraging people with faith because of the access that we have to people. And all those are, are, are great benefits to it. And something we should all be taking advantage of. You know, we, we've gone a, a long way past. It's still a part of it, we, but we've progressed a long way past just taking a picture of your food <laughs> when you're taking when you're eating a meal. Uh, it's become much more robust than that. And people are benefiting from that connection that they're having with one another. So, uh, so we talked a little bit about, a little bit about the rewards. Uh, obviously, there are some risks involved because it's passive, like you talked about before. We just kind of receive it. We're scrolling through. We see something, uh, and a lot of times we probably, I know I don't always understand everything that I am taking in. I, I feel like I'm just passing through it, but actually, I'm, I'm picking up some things. Uh, so there is this risk side of it that uh, we could go down into a deep hole with it. We're, obviously, we're not going to be doing that today. But uh, what are some of those risks that you see that are associated with social media? Yeah, um, I definitely agree with the passive aspect of it. Um, when we don't take an active role in what our digital media consumption looks like, that's when we're going to be in danger. Um, so I like that. Take an active role in the passive media. I, I like that. that yeah. That's that's good advice. Um, so you know, checking out who you're following, checking out why you're following them, mm. examining some of the uh, intentions behind where you're at when it comes to social media um, or digital media in general, uh, instead of just you know clicking the button and letting it go. Right. Um, but another uh, key aspect here, I think, is the comparison or contentment trap that mm. obviously everybody knows mm. about when it comes to social media. Uh, we we frequently will talk about how you're seeing the highlight reel of somebody's life when we're talking to students about Instagram or when we're talking to students about um, Snapchat, TikTok, and it's the truth. You're not going to post about the bad stuff happening in your life. There are some people that yeah, do that, right. um, and even then that's a different level that, of, right. of risk that we're looking at. But um, – for so many people, you are comparing, you know, the 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 video of your life to the highlight reel mm. picture of somebody else's life, and because of that, it's really easy to fall into uh, not being content with what you have or um, keeping up with the Joneses becomes instantly um, a, a risk through social media because not only do you know about the fact that they went on vacation, you get to see. <laughs> aspects yeah, of right. vacation, how long they spent on a sea do and right. <laughs> different things like that. <laughs> so it's really easy to feel um, envious or jealous. But then in addition to that, there's uh, the flip side of that where now we might feel like we want other people to see, you know, this highlight reel of our life. And because of that, another risk is mm-hmm. falling down this like – the, whatever the opposite of authenticness is, yeah, yeah. Um, authenticity, like to create this like carefully sculptured life. I want you to think that I'm this way, but I'm really not. Exactly. And yeah. and so from the outside, it's like, wow, they look great. Mm-hmm. And then in reality, your life's falling apart because uh, sure, you may have taken like the best picture of your kids possible, 
but people aren't going to be able to see that they were crying a minute later yeah. and that you had to yell at them to get to s- sit down and t- uh, smile for the photo. And I think that that's a trap too because mm-hmm. the last thing that we want is to present a a picture of ourselves to the world that isn't who we actually are. It's crystal clear that God created us to be us. He doesn't want us to be somebody that we're not. He he carefully sculpted us. Right. So when we take the time to present this picture to the world of somebody that's not us, we're actually potentially missing out on what he inspired us to do right. by reaching the people that we are intended to reach. Yeah. You you brought up something that I want I kind of want to highlight here a little bit and that is yeah, there are some risks involved, but oftentimes those risks are associated with lack of intentionality, like you talked about. You know, let's take act, let's be active in what is passive. Um, be intentional about what we're watching, what we're viewing, what we're consuming, who we're following, that sort of thing. I think that's really, really good advice. The other thing is it it does expose where we need to grow. So if we recognize that this is the a highlight reel of somebody else, can I celebrate that? Or am I going to be jealous of it? Mm-hmm. If I see what somebody else is doing, am I going to be greedy for what they have? Or am I going to celebrate the fact that they're able to enjoy that? You mentioned contentment before. I do think it's a great challenge to contentment. And security. Do I have my security? Uh, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, do I have a, my security and my relationship with Jesus? Or uh, do I have some growth I have to do there? My response oftentimes to what I see reveals a little bit about where I need to grow, or I can celebrate where God has brought me in my understanding of my own spiritual growth. Would you agree with that? No, I totally agree with that. And, you know, I think one of the challenges of uh, the American church a lot of times is that security piece of finding our security in Jesus and not finding our security in the materials that we've mm-hmm. um, we've gathered, whether it be our house or our job. Uh, so much of that is where we find our identity over and over and over again. And especially when we're talking about digital media, where now um, you can't help, like help but to see what other people have and tailored ads specifically to you and what you don't have And there's an algorithm that's figuring out exactly what you want and teaching you, like, I'm going to put an Amazon ad Mm -hmm. so that you know the thing that's missing out of your cabinet right now. And here's the buy now button. Like, uh, it becomes increasingly easy to fall into that trap of, yeah, I need to find my security in God. I need to find my identity in him because if not – I am being bombarded by messages from the people around me, mm-hmm. from businesses that are just trying to increase their profits, and ultimately even from media that is trying to tell a story that might be completely counterintuitive to what we know from Scripture. Yeah. And so when you consider all of those factors together, we do have to be careful. And that that's, I think, where that active role instead of the passive role comes yeah. in. I think that that is really a key point. I think if if... If we and those who are listening can just hold on to that that principle, let's be active where we tend to be passive. Uh, we are responsible for what we consume. We're responsible for how we respond to it. We're responsible for what we post. All those. Let's be active and um, not be ignorant about what's going on. That's part of what we're uh, reason we're having this conversation today. Okay, so we talked about the rewards. You talked about the risk. If I'm a parent, how do I navigate this? I mean. The further away you are from being a student or a teenager or whatever, uh, the the harder it is to keep up. And it doesn't take many years before it begins to pass you by. And you look at somebody like me, and it's like, I'm so far behind. You know, I'm always trying to catch up. But it's not just catching up. It's the, it's the second nature part. This is a part of, they grew up, you know, the youth today grew up in this technology. It's just, it's a part of who they are. It's a part of their culture. Um so if I'm a parent, I'm I'm not I'm not a part of that culture. I'm inf- I'm influenced by it. I try to drop into it, but it's not a part of who I am. And so it just seems almost overwhelming just to keep up, much less to parent through it. Can you give us some tips and tricks that might help us get started uh, in parenting through helping because we want to help our kids, uh, helping them through this uh, this day and age with technology. Yeah, I think that that's a huge topic, um, and it's so important because it it truly matters. Mm-hmm. If we're talking about discipling our our kids. 
well, we have to choose if we're going to do it or if we're going to let the internet do it. And um, I think that that's, that's so uh, key here. A couple different things come to mind when I consider this topic. And I think um, one of the the big things is just because you might be a a foreigner when it comes to the digital landscape. Um, you know, when we talk about generations, really anybody before the millennials is a digital foreigner. Right. Um, millennials are digital pioneers. And then mm. the current generation is digital natives. They grew wow. up in it, like you said. Mm. But just because you're a foreigner to it doesn't mean that um, you have the excuse to not learn about it. It's like moving to a new country and then just right. completely ignoring the culture that's going on or whatever it, you're experiencing there. So just because it's new to you doesn't mean that you have a, a, a cop out to say, I'm going to throw my hands up in the air and just be done with it, mm-hmm. um, especially if you're raising kids. And so because of that, something that comes to mind for me is just learning Um you know, there's tons of resources out there that can give you the the lowdown or give you the scoop on what's going on with different apps or different pieces of media. Um, a, a couple of resources that I like are Common Sense Media um, is something that um, basically takes all of these different movies, uh, albums, it, it'll take uh, social media apps and gives a parent focused review on them. So what age is appropriate for this? Because, mm, you know, uh, PG-13 and then, you know, rated R for 17 and older. Well, what about my 15-year-old that falls right. directly in the center? What is appropriate for a 15-year-old? And that's that's what this website does in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, and it'll get down to like, yeah, this is appropriate for eight-year-olds, but not six-year-olds. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate websites like that. Um, that was common sense okay. media. Um where they, they go in, they tell you about what is uh, themes, what are topics that are discussed, what are some things to watch out for. And some different resources will even give you like conversation guides mm. based off of that. Oh, because great. I think that's something that's important is so often we – um, when it comes to media, we get scared of it. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, is that like we exist in a world where we are connected. Mm-hmm. And so one way or the other, we're going to end up rushing up against most pieces of media, even if it's just that we're talking to somebody that's that's seen it, listened to it, whatever that looks like. And because of that, we need to be at least aware of what they're talking about, because the last thing that we want is to completely isolate ourselves when we're called to be in the world, but not of the world. Yeah. Um, so there's a difference between falling into the trap of everything right. and completely putting the blinders on and right. turning away from right. that. It's kind of that active versus passive. Don't exactly. just don't be so don't be so hands off that you become passive about it and just well they'll figure it out. That's not a good that's not a good strategy. I need to be active in this. Yeah, and um, another great um, tool that I've seen. And um, I've, I've seen a number of people online that have used this, and I, I love this idea. I'm planning on using this whenever uh, Sam is old enough because I think this is such a great idea, is especially for devices, um, mm. phones, tablets, um, iPads, all these different these different devices. The truth is, is that as a parent, you probably paid for it. You probably fund it in some way, yeah. whether it's the service or, um, you know, keeping the Wi-Fi on in right. your house. But right. one way or the other, you have some level of control over that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I've seen I've seen two different camps here. You know, you've got the parents that put a complete lockdown on the phone um, and then they think that that's, that's enough. But mm-hmm. there's like a relational gap that happens mm-hmm. there. And then on the flip side of that, there's this, the parents that are like, well – they're old enough to have a phone. I don't want to pry. I don't mm-hmm. want to um, make them think I don't trust them. And that's not helpful either right. because as a parent, you are supposed to be parenting. <laughs> right, right. So um, so once again, taking an active role in that. And one of the things that I've seen is this idea of a uh, contract, a device contract, where mm-hmm. based off of how old – a child is, you give them different responsibilities and you take different responsibilities as the parent in the house. So um, one of the great examples here was um, they, they would take like a seventh and an eighth grader and say, um, okay, you are going to basketball practice more. You're staying after school more frequently. You're going to need me to call me to give, get a ride. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, your friends are starting to get these. I want you to be connected, but I'm going to buy you a phone, but it's not your phone. 
It's my phone. Good. I can take it whenever I want. I can uh, ground you from it. I have full control over that because at the age that you're in, Mm -hmm. that's what you need it for. I'm going to provide for you the things that you need, Mm. but not necessarily give you the keys to the kingdom. So they draw up a contract that says, um, this is what it looks like because this phone is mine. Mm -hmm. You're going to turn it in at a certain time. Um, I get the chance to check it whenever I want. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily get to download apps without talking to me first. Whatever that looks like for your house, for your family, they draw up this contract and then they have a conversation. They say, Mm -hmm. do you think that this is fair? Do you see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Once they've had a chance to go back and forth, just like any good contract, um, both the the student and the parent sign it. And then now you've got this thing that you can refer back to and say, hey – you agreed to this, right. but I just caught you on an app that you told me that you weren't going to get right. on. Um, right. You were interacting with somebody that you told me that you weren't interacting with. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because of that, you know what the consequence is. I'm going to take your phone for X amount mm-hmm. of days. Mm-hmm. And that helps them to to learn in a controlled environment. Then when they get into early high school, ninth and 10th grade, and all these contracts are built on like this two-year idea, just like if they were an adult and they were signing up for a phone contract as is. Mm. Um, So then when they're a ninth and 10th grader, it says, um, this is no longer my phone. It's our phone. Mm. So because of that, here's the responsibilities that you as the person that's going to control the phone most have. And here's the responsibilities that I have as the person that's paying for it. Um, You are responsible for if you drop your phone, paying for the repairs. You're responsible for uh, making sure that it's charged, like all of those types of things. But then I'm still responsible for (laughs) if you're not using it correctly, I'm going to shut it off, like that, that type of thing. And then that graduates into, by the time that they're 17 and 18, junior and senior in high school, um, that final two-year stretch where you can say, all right, this is your phone now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you you have to pay for it in some way, whether that's chores around the house or um, getting a job and helping to pay for the phone bill in some way. Every repair that needs to be done is now your responsibility. If you want to get an upgrade, you're going to have to pay for it. And not only does that um, create this like growing sense of responsibility in them, it also prepares them for the real world in some real practical ways. Because the truth is, is that as parents, if we are – you know, putting all these different blocks in place and then they turn 18 and they move away to college. Well, yeah. yeah. Guess what? You're Katie you're, bar the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your, your, uh, your college dorm isn't going to have the right. same blocks that you might have on your Wi-Fi. Right. So we, we aren't just trying to keep them blind to it. And so mm-hmm. we're trying to help them build a worldview of how they can keep themselves protected from media and why they need to be protected from that. Yeah. And so much of that comes through conversation, um, which is why I think that's a, such a key part of the contract experience. Yeah. yeah, the relationship part. I'm not doing this because I want to lord it over you. I'm doing it because I love you. Yeah. And I let me do my job as a parent and demonstrate my love for you. And the more we we learn about this and as parents – you know, we need to uh, we need to approach this uh, with the understanding about uh, we're not going to be able to shut this all down. This is going this is going to be a part of their life, and what I'm trying to do is shepherd their hearts in the current culture that they're living in to be someone who is honoring God uh, with every aspect of their life, including their social media, the digital media. Um, but there are also there are also some like guardrails. I mean, you, you talked about the contract. I, I considered you were putting some guardrails in there, but there's some apps too that are some guardrails, aren't there? That that can kind of help a parent in this journey, even because you can't look over your shoulder of your kid all the time, right? I mean, it's impossible to do that. So, do you have any? Are there any apps that you could that you could help us with that kind of put some more guardrails on this? Yeah, there's some really great ones out there, and especially if you are going to have a uh, a or a student with a phone. I almost feel like at least one of these should almost be like a requirement Mm. to some degree um, because some of them are even built into the phone. You don't have to pay anything extra. You just have to be aware that they're in there. Um, So uh, one of the best apps that I've ever seen when it comes to this is called Covenant Eyes. It's something that you can put on a laptop. You can put it on a tablet. You can put it onto a phone. Pretty much any device you could possibly think of has this app. And what that does is it's an accountability software. So it's not just saying like, you can't go these places. It's saying, hey, if you go these places, I'm going to know about it. Mm. And sometimes that's all the encouragement that you need. Right. Um, And 
you can set it up to tailor it to exactly what you need. Okay. So if your student is having a problem with a specific website, you can shut down just that website mm. without necessarily okay. blocking the rest of their, their access. Um, so that's called Covenant Eyes. It's a, it's a monthly subscription. I think they might have an annual subscription that's a little bit cheaper as well, but it's, it's a really great option when it comes to this. Um, another great example is one called Bark. Um, they, they called it that because it's the, uh, like internet watchdog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, this is one that I don't have personal experience with, but I've seen a ton of great reviews, um, done some research in it. And one of the things that it advertises itself as is a social media, uh, accountability. So not only is it checking out what websites they're going to and what media are they consuming, it also, you know, points out, hey, there is the chance that they're cyberbullying or being cyberbullied. It's saying, hey, there's uh, some questionable content on this specific mm. app that mm-hmm. you need to watch out for. So it it has the capability of actually going in and checking like text messages and DMs and different things like that, which is really important because, you know, you can't necessarily look at text from a picture standpoint and be like, oh, my child needs to stay away from that. So right. it actually has like some AI that okay. allows it to scan the text and let, flag it if you need to be aware of it. Yeah. Well, again, it goes back to this being active rather than passive. If you're a parent, uh, you're going to have to parent, you're going to be active, you're going to make some investment financially with your time, into relationship, all that sort of stuff. There's going to be an investment that's going to be there that we have to make. You've already intimated towards some next steps. You know we're big about next steps here at Grace Church because we believe that every time we are exposed to something, to the truth of God's word or some truth that he's revealed to us, there's a next step that we need to be taking. Um, you've talked a little bit inherently about some of those, but why don't you reiterate some of those next steps? If, if you were sitting in the in, in somebody else's chair and w- wanting to make progress in uh, how we have this relationship, a healthy relationship with digital media, what would be some next steps that you would encourage them to take? I think one of the, the key ones here is, so you just talked about the relationship with digital media, but I think it starts with the relationship mm. with your student. That's good. Um, I, it's a bit of a tangent, but it makes me think of in The Lion King when uh, Mufasa and Simba are like, look at all this land, it's yours. And then Simba says like, but what about that over there? Mm. And Mufasa's like, that's the elephant graveyard. We don't go there. <laughs> um, he doesn't provide any context for why we don't go there. So what's he do? Simba immediately wants to go check it out. Right. I think that when we have a conversation with a student, uh, specifically our student, and we mm-hmm. say, hey, I know that this dangerous content is out there. I'm mm-hmm. not blind to it. I know that you're not blind to it. Mm-hmm. But here is why I want you to stay away from it. Because I want you to be protected. I want you to be cared for. And most of all, I I want you to guard your heart. And when we have that conversation with them, instead of it just being, um, you're not allowed to go there because I don't want you to go there. When we help them to develop the why behind it, Mm. well, then that makes the rest of this all a much easier conversation. When they know that we're protecting them and not trying to keep them from something, it changes the, the relationship of the conversation mm-hmm. even. So I think that that's a, a big one. Um, another huge one is that we're going to provide a resource um, mm-hmm. that uh, is going to give you access to some of the apps I mentioned, good. Um, some step-by-step guides on some of these different things, and just a number of different resources kind of pulling them all together. So make sure to download that, look over that as a guide. And um, especially if you've got middle schoolers or high schoolers, um, it's never too late to try and develop one of those contracts like I talked about. That's good. I think that that's, that's something key. And um, the earlier you start that, the better, because if not, you're just going to be making up for lost time. Um, and if you start off on the right foot, you can course correct a lot easier. That's so I, I would encourage all parents to, even if it's just sitting down and having the conversation, yeah. Um, yeah. to develop some level of a back and forth contract between their student and them. That's good. So uh, relationship and resource. Invest in that relationship, download the resource, and uh, that will help kind of get you started. And of course, uh, if if uh, someone is listening to this who's not a part of Grace Church, there's a pastor or a youth pastor who's willing to talk to you, I'm sure, about this. I would love here to. Here at Grace Church, <laughs> uh, you would love to talk to somebody about uh, next steps that they need to be taking or any questions they might have about it.
Yeah. Well, thanks, Sean, so much for joining us. Appreciate that. And uh, we trust that our conversation today has been helpful for you as well as you pursue the full life that God has for you as you learn to navigate and have this healthy relationship with digital media. You know, Jesus came that we might have life and have it to the full. If you don't have a church home, uh, you're certainly welcome to join us here at Grace Church, either in person or online. If you want to check out the times for those services, just go to graceforohio.org. And remember, Jesus came that you might have life and have it to the full, and Sean and I uh, trust and pray that you'll pursue that full life that God has for you.